Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Leanne Simons. I have a master's degree in nutrition science. I'm a registered dietitian and a licensed dietitian nutritionist in the great state of Massachusetts. And today, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, the myth of detox, or what I call the detox myth. And in this case, when I'm referring to detox, we're talking about those cleanses. So if your pharmacy sells it, it must be good, right? No, wrong. Detox is a case of a legitimate medical term being used as a marketing strategy designed to treat a non-existent condition. Detoxification is a treatment, but it's for dangerous levels of drugs, alcohol, or poisons. Detoxification treatments are medical procedures, and real detox is provided in a hospital or medically supervised setting. But in this case, when we talk or hear about detox, we're looking at a fake treatment. This phrase has been co-opted to sell useless products and services. So it's a fake treatment for a fake disease. Evaluating any detox should be simple. And what I wanna do is help to debunk three detox ideas. What about those toxins? What are those toxins that we're so worried about? And these toxins are making us sick. So we need to cleanse or detox or whatever we need to do to make us better. What I'm hoping today to do is help you make your decisions out of facts, not fear. I want you to be smart consumers, not pseudoscience suckers. So let's look at the first one. What about these toxins? Our bodies accumulate toxins. See, there's a reason we fall for this whole marketing strategy of detox. Our brains are hardwired to believe in rituals, in sympathetic magic. These were, well, purification rituals date back to the earliest reaches of recorded history. And let me just, for detox, real detox, it isn't ordered from a menu at a juice bar. It's not assembled from supplies in your cabinets. It's used drugs, it uses drugs for real detoxification. And these are not ingredients that are found in your smoothies. So detox is a religious ritual. And what's being promoted today is detox. It's not that different than the eons old religious rituals of cleansing and purification. But see, framing detox in religious terms might not have the appeal of science. So what's being promoted today as detox Instead of using the word sin, they use the word toxin. Instead of religious ritual, detox. So that sounds more sciencey, right? And then what happened is that instead of using detoxification as a reason for um, cleansing your body. As our knowledge of biology, as it kind of grew, we learned the word, we started using the word auto intoxication. These fears kind of became manifested in this idea that if you clean out the bowels, you can cure any illness. But fortunately, auto intoxication got thrown out around mm, the early 1900s. And now in today's environment, auto intoxication Salt, meat, smog. Here's something that people may think is a toxin, but they're okay. To, it actually is a toxin, but it's okay with a lot of people. And well, I'll talk about that in a second. GMOs, which by the way, aren't a thing. They're genetically engineered foods, not genetically modified organisms, but that's another topic. Chemicals, and of course, gluten. So today's version of auto intoxication, it's the environment. So see these detox kits that we'll talk about and treatments, they never name the toxins that they're gonna remove. Why? 
because they've never been shown to remove any toxins. The second idea is that the toxins that they aren't telling us about that they're removing are actually making us sick. And this is another marketing strategy. They use general symptoms like headache, fatigue, insomnia, hunger. And then they might talk about specific symptoms like cancer. But if we go back to these general symptoms for a minute, if I look at these and I don't wanna look at them, I'm in serious need of a detox. Before I even got out of bed this morning, I had at least five or six of these symptoms. So what about all the chemicals? That's usually what we're worried about as detoxing us. Here's some chemicals because a lot of us feel, have been told if you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't eat it. Well, these are the chemicals found in an all natural egg. And here's something I do wanna to talk to you about though. There is a petition out there, dhmo.org. They wanna ban dihydrogen monoxide. And let me just briefly tell you about dihydrogen monoxide because it's a colorless, odorless chemical, accidental inhalation may be fatal, prolonged exposure to its solid form can cause severe damage, and symptoms of DHMO ingestion include excessive sweating, urination, possibly bloated feeling, nausea, vomiting, all these things are caused by DHMO. If we look over here at Jeff, he was a professional athlete for over 10 years. And for, the, for seven of those, he was taking DHMO to increase his endurance and now he's addicted. And the fact of the matter is without DHMO, he will die in three days because there's no cure for this addiction. And finally, these products should not contain the same chemicals, yet you can find DHMO in both. My question is, do you believe that the government should ban DHMO? It certainly sounds toxic. Let's look at what DHMO is. Dihydrogen monoxide. Di means two, so there's two hydrogens. Mono means one, one oxygen. DHMO is water. But it's true, all those things I told you about dihydrogen monoxide are true. Here's something I want you to keep in mind when you hear about toxins. All things are poison and there is none which is not a poison. Solely the dose differentiates a poison from a remedy. Or as my students get tired of hearing me say, it's the dose that makes the poison. So now a days, what detoxes are based on is the idea that toxic substances, again, I don't know what those toxic substances are, but they can be removed by eating or avoiding certain foods. The most popular detoxes tend to be drinking cleansing fruit and vegetable juices. Mind you, if you wanna drink fruit and vegetable juices, that's fine. Drink them because you like them, not because you think your body is a toxic waste dump that needs to be cleansed. The most popular detoxes involve these drinks, and they also avoid cutting out meat, avoiding cutting out caffeine, avoid cutting out wheat. Ah, here's one that is sold as a detox. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Suja, it's a green juice. It's got 42 grams of sugar in 16 ounces. There's no iron, there's no vitamins, there's very little protein. And between seven and $9, what you're getting is a bottle of juice. It's sugar water. It's not a magic key for weight loss or well being. It's cold pressed, it's organic, it makes vague promises of making you feel less gross. A three day suja juice cleanse, I can't even say it will cost you almost $110. I can help you for a lot less than that. So my question is, what's the actual toxin? And which toxins are causing the symptoms? How do these toxins cause the disease? I can't find that information. To show that even a single chemical requires a, causes a disease requires a significant amount of research. So I ask, What's the toxin and what disease is it causing? 
calm down. <laughs> so we need, here's the third one. We need to cleanse ourselves. We need to get rid of these toxins. We need to detox. Well, about those detoxes. Can detoxing be harmful? Well, if you eat food, and I'm a big fan of food, I'm a dietitian. I'm a big fan of food, but eat it because you like it, not because you think it's going to cleanse you. And food can be good, but these detox kits, they're unsafe, they're unregulated. They're sold as supplements. And according to the law, the government cannot regulate supplements. So what's on the label might not even be what's in the product. But here, some of the contents of these detox kits can vary. They typically contain two types of ingredients. Milk thistle, they may contain something called milk thistle. They may contain something called senna. But they sell them as detox kits. Oh, this one's 10 days. They're all different kinds of detox kits. Now, what I will say is that a one day fast for a healthy person is probably likely to be harmless and probably useless. Although the products can be expensive and that could hurt, but prolonged fasting, that can be fatal. And then there's something called chelation therapy that's often promoted by naturopaths as a way to get chemicals out of your body. De chelation therapy is used in a hospital or medically supervised setting for people who have heavy metal poisoning. But chelation therapy administered by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing can make you very ill. It can cause an electrolyte balance. It can cause an imbalance in the chemicals in your body. It can damage your organs. And the thing is that these feelings of nausea and diarrhea are often promoted as cleansing reactions. This proves that the toxins are leaving your body. No, that's not what it is. These are symptoms that are seen in hospital patients who have difficulty eating once they've been fed intravenously because they were sick. And these kinds of treatments can cause weight loss, not fat loss. There's a difference, water loss and muscle loss. And if we look at the medical literature, which I've done, a search of the medical literature for the clinical studies of these detox kits, nothing. There is no credible evidence to demonstrate that detox kits do anything at all. They have not been shown to remove toxins or offer any other health benefit. So what are the toxins? These detox kits and treatments never name the toxins they remove. What's the disease? They've never been shown to remove any toxins that cause any disease. Now, some people detox through their mouths. Others go the other route. Coffee enemas, unfortunately, are popular. And these are unsafe and should be avoided at all costs. They can cause Septicemia, which is when you get bacteria in your bloodstream, they can cause rectal perforation, electrolyte imbalances, and even death have been reported. But they kind of dress it up and call it colon hydrotherapy. And you see pictures, and if we look at the colon on the left, it looks like it's filled to the brim with horrible toxins. And then after you flush the bowels, it's clean. And what they tell you is that those are toxins that have been removed. Basically, you're just forcibly giving yourself diarrhea and paying somebody to do it for you. Now, the Journal of Family Practice has, well, I found this. And for people who don't like words they can't or are afraid of words that they can't pronounce, case reports have noted back and pelvic abscesses after colonic hydrotherapy. I can't even pronounce all these fatal aeroportia air emboli, rectal perforations. Well, I don't know if you've just eaten, so I'm not gonna finish this here. But if you don't like chemical sounding ingredients, what do you think about these? And one of these things is not like the other. On the left, these are your liver and your kidneys. These are vital organs that contribute to cleansing your body every day. On the right, 
a subjectively tasty drink, and without it, your liver and your kidney will still cleanse your body every day. Try not to get the two confused. And then folks want to know, will sweating release toxins? Will I sweat out the toxins if I should go to wherever it is people go to sweat? I'm sorry, no, absolutely not. You don't sweat out toxins. You lose water, you lose sodium, and you need to replace those or you can get very, very sick. So what have we learned? Well, one premise was that our bodies are accumulating toxins. Mm, no, another, these toxins are making us sick. Again, no. And the third, that we need to detox ourselves to remove these toxins. I think you know the answer to this one. No. So how do you detox? How are you supposed to stay healthy when your life is running you ragged in these times of global pandemic? What are we supposed to do, even if it's when it's not a global pandemic? A balanced diet. Please try to be active. And for those of you that have a body in motion as opposed to a body at rest, five minute walks, three times a day, there's 15 minutes. You can build on that regular activity. Make sure your vaccinations are up to date. Jot, get your physical. It's still a good idea. And please, don't spend money on juice if you want it to detox you. Ah, any questions? Anyone? Does anybody know anyone who's ever done a detox and how it's worked and with how they felt about it or felt afterwards? Is fresh juice okay? Of course. I mean, yes, it is okay, but you're drinking it because you like it, not because you think it's going to detox. Now, I, as a dietitian, think of juice as sugar water. It's another name for sugar water. And I, as a dietitian, suggest to folks, you know, if you can afford it in your calorie salary, sure, have juice. But I'd rather see people eat the fruit then drink the juice because chances are you probably wouldn't eat as much fruit as it would take to make the juice that you would drink. Fruit juice with no added sugar, it's still juice, it's still sugar, it's fruit sugar, but it's still sugar. Again, if you like it, drink it. If you can afford it in your calorie salary, by all means. But it's, it's, I would rather see people eat the fruit than drink the juice. And again, if you have weight issues or blood sugar issues, I would think twice about juice. Do I have a, an opinion on intermittent fasting? That's interesting. Um, a study just came out on that that showed that certain types of intermittent fasting resulted in muscle loss as opposed to people who were doing the intermittent fasting as opposed to folks who were eating the same amount of calories but not doing intermittent fasting. My opinion is if it's something that you can live with and you're getting the nutrients you need, again, this is just one study that just came out. I don't know what the follow-up's going to be, but I think that all diets work while you're on them. The proof is in the maintenance. You did a three-day juice cleanse and had no alarming symptoms. Uh, no, I don't think it's a good idea because you're using it for the wrong reason. Now, because it, well, let me put it this way. If you thought your body needed to be detoxed and you spent the money on a juice cleanse, it was a waste. If you can, if you like the way the stuff tastes and you want to spend your money on it, that's how you want to spend your money. Um, 
I don't know that using juices as meal replacements are a good idea because they don't have all the nutrients that you might get in a complete meal. But again, periodically, if you are healthy, you don't have any other conditions, it shouldn't harm you. But I'm not giving you medical advice because I don't know your history. What is a reasonable weight rate? Oh, a pound a month. Well, if somebody's losing, this is, this is a good question. And it's another discussion on the difference between weight loss and fat loss. It's easy to lose weight. I weigh 145 pounds. If I drink a quart of water and get back on the scale, I'll weigh 147. I didn't put on two pounds of fat. I put on two pounds of weight. And you can lose weight quickly, but fat loss takes time. If you're only losing a pound a month, then that's telling me that you're making changes that you can live with. And I think that's great. Again, as long as the quality of your diet is good and you're not feeling deprived. Ooh, more questions. Oh. Any other questions? These are great questions. Have I heard of adding broccoli da, 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 to support? No, your liver doesn't need the support of broccoli, cabbage, apples, onions, but you can certainly eat them because you like them and they're nutrient dense foods, but it's not gonna do anything for your liver. So don't eat them because you think it's gonna support your liver, eat them because they're part of your diet. And I don't like people to eat food, again, unless you have a specific condition, I don't want you eating food for medical reasons. What else do you have for me? Did I miss anything? All right, so please take care of yourselves. These are confusing, conflicting times. Be gentle to yourselves. Don't think of your bodies as toxic waste dumps that need to be cleansed. Oh, some article says that having vitamins is not good since those are, since. I don't, I don't understand your question. Some article says that having vitamins is not good since they're done by chemicals. Vitamins are chemicals. Ascorbic acid is vitamin C. Thymine pyrophosphate is vitamin B1. So don't be afraid of chemicals. Natural vitamins, good. I think the ones that come in a bottle are the same thing as what you get in your food. The problem is when you're getting them in a bottle, that's all you're getting. If you take calcium, pills, that's all you're getting is calcium. But if you drink milk, you're getting calcium, vitamin D, magnesium, lactose, other things that help your body to absorb the calcium more efficiently. Unfortunately, some people take vitamins. Vitamins should be supplements, not food or nutrition replacements. I'm not a fan of supplements. And unless you have a specific deficiency, I don't think that they've been shown to be any good. You're welcome. Spend your money on food. Water fasting cures illness? No, there's no fasting that cures an illness that I know of. It doesn't mean it's not out there, but I need the data to talk about that. So no. Make your decisions from facts, not fear. That's what I want.
Am I seeing a question from, oh, uh, what would I suggest to lose weight? I would ask you to talk to a registered dietitian. I would talk about, well, the formula for losing weight is decrease calories in, increase calories out. That sounds really, um, that's hard, but you know what's hard is changing the behaviors that led you to overeat to begin with. If you're somebody who eats under stress and you go on a diet and you lose all kinds of weight and then you go off the diet, unless you learned how to deal with that stress, once you're back in a stressful situation, you'll go back to the same behaviors. So I would suggest that you work with a registered dietitian to talk about what works for you. It's not a one size fits all. And you should talk to someone who can help you with your concerns. If somebody told me I could never eat Oreo cookies, then I wouldn't listen to them. But I have worked with folks on how to use the foods that incorporate the foods they like into a plan that they can live with. So I would encourage you to talk to a registered dietitian to um, try walking if you like to walk. That would be a starter. There's some other questions over here. What do you have here? What are my thoughts on current clean eating trends? I don't like any of them. I don't like, I think that avoiding processed foods is difficult for people who don't have money to buy fresh fruits and vegetables. Canned fruits, canned vegetables, frozen fruits, frozen vegetables, fro those are all excellent foods, all right? So people who can't afford to buy fresh foods I'm concerned that they won't buy any. And the thing about clean eating, again, I think that that's for people who are fortunate and can afford it. I think that clean eating leads to disordered eating. And there is a condition called orthorexia where people are so hung up on only eating certain foods that they cut back on their social lives, they cut back on family, they cut back on nutrition. So I think that that's, that can be very dangerous to me. Clean eating means it hasn't been on the floor for very long. I have a feeling that processed foods, you weren't talking about canned or frozen though, right? You're talking about chips and, and my Oreos. And I would go back to what I said earlier, that it's the dose that makes the poison. That it's not what you eat, it's how much you eat. What other questions can I answer for you? What other myths can I debunk while I'm here?
All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for your time. I appreciate it. And stay well, take care of yourselves, be good to yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>